It's time to take command with former NFL tight end Logan Paulson and former Commander's Beat reporter Craig Hoffman. What's happening? Welcome in to Take Command Podcast. Craig Hoffman, Logan Paulson with you, Logan. It's training camp day. It starts today. How crazy is that, man? It feels like it was a long time coming, but here it is, and we're super excited for it. Very, very excited. So on Monday, we previewed the entire offense uh, as well as some bigger overall thoughts, which meant that defense got saved for today. So let's dive in. Off we go. Three questions each position group. What do you look for in camp at this group? Position battles to watch and confidence levels in your D-line, linebackers, DBs. We'll uh, show some love to the specialists at the end as well. Can't forget Tressway. Tress will never forget you. Uh, Let's get rolling. Let's start off with the defensive line. And what do we look for? Uh, Obviously, you have the tackles, you have the edges. What are we looking for here? Um, Obviously, this is uh, one of those positions that's more based on like athletic traits. So, obviously, when you're watching one on ones, do they have athletic pass rush juice? And then, team, like, are they physical at the line of scrimmage? Can they get hands on guys? Can they shed blocks? Do they? And again, this is another one kind of like receiver where are they making plays? And I think that can't be overstated the value of getting a group of guys uh, or getting an individual specifically that's going to make plays. And so um, the physicality, the raw physicality, the raw tools, the athleticism to rush the passer and the physicality to stop the run are all things that you kind of circle and say, this is super, uh, this is super important to the position. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, one-on-ones are always really fun to watch here. O-line, D-line, like who's got the pass rush juice. Uh, We've seen, I won't say we've seen guys make teams out of that, but like you can really tell oh, this guy's got a different level of juice. We need to watch him a little bit more in the team settings. And if they can re- replicate that uh, in 11-on-11, 11 11, then that guy's probably going to wind up on the team, especially on a team that doesn't have a lot of pass rush juice on the outside coming in, at least doesn't appear to have a lot of pass rush juice on the outside coming in. Um I think there's a lot to watch on the interior, which gets us to our position battles as well. We know John and Duran are in. I think Johnny Newton's status is really fascinating and could majorly affect this team. Yeah. Um, you know, Newton's uh, is going to start camp on NFI. Um, he would start on PUP, but the injury he had was sustained in college. So uh, technically, he's on NFI. And if he's not ready for the season, in some ways, it makes it easier because you're looking at okay, how many interior guys are they going to keep? Big Phil, John Ridgeway, like there's some other guys that have been around in the past that are probably going to wind up on the outside in, but even between uh, Ridgeway and Big Phil, like is there enough for everybody on the roster depending on how many edge guys you want to keep? So this this becomes really interesting really fast, and one way that you could quote-unquote solve that problem, at least temporarily, is if Newton's not ready for the season, but that then presents the problem that Newton's not ready for the season. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, this group is, again, one of those ones kind of like receiver where we don't really know exactly what they're looking for. And and, and do they even have that type of player on the roster? Because I think when you look at Dallas and what they did in Dallas, they just a- accumulated all these like really good pass rushers. And obviously Doris Armstrong's here from Dallas. He's one of those guys that's surefire to make the team. Dante Fowler feels very similar to that. But then you say like, is it KJ Henry and Andre Jones, are they both making the team? Because that would get you to five edge rushers with Cleveland Farrell. And then that gets to your point. Like, if you're keeping five edge rushers and then you got to keep four or five interior guys, like John Ridgeway versus Big Phil, um, Benny Potuai versus Nor- uh, Norrell Pollard, the kid from Virginia, the UDFA, who showed all that tremendous pass rush promise. I mean, analytically, he was one of the best pass rushers in college football. So to me, it's like totally up in the air. And then if you take Drazan out, it makes it a little bit cleaner because you just need bodies. But if Drazan's healthy for the start of the season, which seems, which is up in the air at the moment, I'm not going to comment on the injury status or anything like that, but it does, it does make that dynamic really, uh, really interesting. And again, like, what are they, what are they going to value? Are they going to value kind of a big run stopping player. Uh, You know, obviously they drafted or Dan drafted Ridgeway in Dallas and John from all our Ridgeway has been very excited about Dan being here and feels like he fits in the system. Well, so it's like, it's kind of like, you know, uh, one of those ones where it's, there's so many questions, there's so many layers to this. Um, and uh, can't wait to see what it looks like. Yeah, as you mentioned, one affects the other, and, and that also gets to the outside stuff. So I think Fowler, Furl, and Armstrong are locks. I think Henry's probably a lock, um, but based yeah. off of both draft position last year and merit, like I think KJ Henry's probably clearly the fourth best guy here. But 
you draft Javante John Baptiste. They did choose to re- bring back FA, who's got inside he's outside on position flex. Pup, though, right, right now. Um, I do think, yeah, I do think he's coming off the an injury, so maybe that they're able to bring him in in the middle of the year if mm-hmm. someone else gets hurt. But like, he's a really interesting guy, sure. Um, that they chose to bring back, and we know he can play three tech as well as play outside. Jones has all this juice, but like, does he know how to use it? Right. Um, and can he use it at the NFL level? So like, and and then again, John Baptiste is a draft pick. Um, right, so he's a seventh round pick. I mean, he's a guy that feels like you could probably sneak to practice squad, and he's probably. also kind of navigating an injury, from what I understand. So, you know, wh- I think what is it? What do they report tomorrow? They report on Tuesday. So, like, I think that for this group specifically, that that injury, what is that injury designation, is going to be yeah. super important. Like, who's where? What's going on? Because it it might be really complicated, like you're saying, or maybe. FA and John Baptiste are on pup, and then you're like, okay, well, then these are the well, guys. That was easy. The yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, linebacker. Uh, oh, sorry. Confidence level in this group. Uh, I'm, this I, is think hard. This gonna be very, I think it's going to be a very solid group. You know, I think they're going to, in terms of like, you know, breaking the NFL sack record, I don't think they're going to do that, but I think they're going to be really solid. I think, you know, we gave the receivers a seven, and I think yeah. I kind of feel the same way about this group. I think John and Duran are going to play better. I think the edge guys are going to do what they're supposed to do. I think the defensive scheme is going to elevate them. So I think because of scheme, because of kind of who the players have shown themselves to be in terms of just super consistent, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, I feel pretty good. I just, I, in some ways, it is exactly like receiver, where I feel really good about the floor and not great about the ceiling. Right. Where I'm like, oh man, but they just don't have that like horse off the edge, um, which we'll talk about in a second when we get to linebacker. But, um, yeah, seven seven feels right. Okay, linebacker. Speaking of, um, you have Wagner, you have Luvu, um, and th- those guys are. You know, what do you, what do you look for in camp at this group? I want to see those guys play football, um, but yeah. there's a lot more to it. Linebacker, what are you looking for uh, so, specifically? So yeah, like are they fitting gaps correctly? Are they in their spots in coverage? How's their communication? You know, that's the middle. That's the backbone of the defense. Like they got to talk to everybody, make sure everybody's on the same page. I think obviously Bobby Wagner is. You know, maybe the best in the NFL at that. So I expect that to go really well. And then usage, I think we're going to talk about there in a second. But like, how are they going to use Frankie Luvu? And if they're going to use him as an edge rusher, you know, which maybe changes the numbers a little bit for the defensive end group. Um, how do they use Jordan McGee or Jamin Davis? Or does Anthony Pittman edge somebody out? Like, those are guys that I think are, are really, in terms of how they use players. And then are they, I think that also kind of bleeds into the nickelback scenario in terms of like, do they have a lot of confidence in uh, Dominic Hampton? Does he take one of these linebacker spots? So um, usage for this group is maybe the most important because I think it speaks to kind of a, an identity with regards to the defense. And obviously, I think the two guys, Luvu and, and Warner or, or Wagner, excuse me, are in. But after that, you're kind of like, what, what does Joe Witt Jr. want to do with this group in terms of are we using a nickel? Are we using a dime? Are we using Luvu in pass rushing situations? Who's the next rotational piece for that? So I think uh, in addition to like the technical elements, like usage is extremely important for this group. Yeah. Um, if you had to pick, bonus question, which guy plays the most snaps this year? I'll, I'll phrase it that way. Luvu, I think. You think Luvu over Wagner? Like if, if the 100% snap guy is Luvu? I think so. I think because Luvu, like, while maybe not being the most dynamic coverage player, I think he adds value as a pass rusher. And so I think they're going to find a pass rusher and a blitzer. So I think they're going to find ways to keep him on the field. And I think when you look at Wagner at this point in his career, I think he's still a very good player. But I want to add better coverage players. So I think when you look at Dallas, like they'd leave one linebacker on the field, which I, I guess that could be Wagner. But I think Wagner and Luvu maybe both together in some nickel rush packages because of Luvu's ability to rush the passer. But then I think that's where the Dominique Hampton, Mike Sandra still, Quan Martin questions start to kind of matriculate there in terms of if you feel really good about those guys, maybe they can actually play line linebacker for you in certain pass rushing situations. So interesting. All right. So position battle to watch. Um I, I mean, this one feels kind of clean uh for me it's jamin davis it's jamin yeah davis. well like, jamin davis is like it's almost jamin versus himself if we look yes. at luvu wagner i think Pittman, like veteran they brought him in on for a reason jordan he's, McGee. he's looked good he's made plays in yeah OCS in camp, you know like, jordan mcgee rookie he's obviously making it so there's four and that could be it yeah um and then you get to jamin yeah so position battle jamin versus himself 
Yeah, and I think this is going to be really interesting, and and maybe one of like the most interesting stories of camp, and maybe reflect, maybe could possibly reflect, kind of how the new group is viewing certain positions. Like, you know, they they they're trying them out at edge rusher. In my experience, and I have no inside information on this, but in my experience, just playing and watching a lot of football, you don't move somebody like that because you love them playing linebacker or you love them playing right. their original position. Like, if I'm getting moved from like receiver to tight end, like it's not because like they love me as a receiver. You know what I'm saying? So the, um, I think that's something that it, it puts my antennas up in terms of like how they maybe potentially view him. And like, if you, if you've got a raw guy linebacker who needs a lot of reps to be better, like, why are you taking linebacker reps away from him if you want him to play linebacker? So for me, it's, it's, it's Jamin. And again, like, that fifth guy has got to be a dog on teams and Jamin just hasn't done a ton of that. So it is a really interesting because it's really Jamin versus himself, but also like maybe, um, you know, KJ Henry or maybe it's Dominique Hampton or, um, you know, the, the other DB from Colorado state, who's a UDFA who might make the team. Like those, those relationships become really interesting all of a sudden. And if we're saying who's going to play better special teams, it's probably not Jamin Davis because he hasn't done it since he's been here. So I think it, it just, it's a really, really that, that him specifically in that room is super interesting because like, I think he's in a, he's in a difficult spot to make the roster. I think. Yeah, he is my counter, like my devil's advocate. Yeah, go for it. I mean, that's just be, my like thousand foot right. view. Yeah. He's four or five speed fast with crazy long arms and he hits like a truck. So, in the new kickoff rules, like could he hasn't, but could he be a monster on special teams? Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, Jamin, there's the ball. Go get it. Like that's the thing he's best at. But you so know, I, but but you know, I know who's a good like, you know who I know is a monster on special teams, like Christian Holmes and Percy Butler and you sure. know what I'm saying? And like sure. if you're competing so it with might those- wind up yeah, it might up being the fifth or sixth safety versus Jamin, but also then like what do you like as pass rush? I mean, yeah. obviously the big the big determining factor is gonna be can he figure out this pass rush thing? And he's got some physical traits that you would like if if you looked at Jamin Davis as a draft prospect and I gave you a blind resume in terms of raw athletic score, yeah. measurements, et cetera. I know what you like in pass rushers. I'm talking yeah. you specifically, not generic you, but also NFL generic you. Use out there. Um, yeah. no, I'm, I'm like, with you. We could, with we you. could work with this. He so the question the is, can he do sure. it? Um, yeah. I, I do think that the fact that we're not even talking about him as an off-ball linebacker is pretty fascinating um, yeah. and definitely not good for him. Um, because, But I'm also like... I don't know. I go back to thinking about how we talked about him last year and I'm like, I don't know. It felt like he got better and also kept like the coaches were frustrated with him for silly reasons at times. And he actually was playing pretty well. And I also think of a guy like Patrick queen in Baltimore, all of a sudden playing next to Roquan Smith. I'm like, what would Jamin Davis be next to a Bobby Wagner? And so that's, that's again, I I had a similar thought. We, I mean, you know, we, we talk a lot of football and so obviously we share similar outlooks, but wouldn't you want him to get reps doing that in practice? And he didn't get those reps. Like he was rushing the passer. Like, so it's, it's almost like, you know, it, if I wanted that to happen, I'd get him out there instead of Jordan McGee. But they, they said, we want Jordan McGee to do that. And I understand you've got a draft pick and Jordan McGee's college film's amazing. So yeah. like, I want to see that guy on the field too. But it just, it, and I'm not saying like they can't change their minds and OTAs and mini camps are really up in the air, but I just thought it was an interesting decision with a guy that, like you said, has all this upside athletically to be like, you you are a guy that historically has needed a lot of reps to get something down. We're not going to give you a lot of reps at linebacker, but we're going to have you rush the passer. It just seemed like an interesting decision. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I'm very, very curious to see what Jamin Davis's camp looks like. And realistically, we could be looking at 52 not on the roster um, come the end of camp, which feels crazy, but also is not when you take a look at the actual roster all right back to the luvu and wagner of it all confidence level on linebackers like a nine and a half like yeah. those guys are probably the best some of the best most consistent football players on the team like i mean if anybody has access to film or has access to old carolina games go watch frankie luvu and you're just like holy cow and then i think bobby wagner's film speaks for itself like his resume is outstanding it's it's almost impeccable you know um, I, I, Jer, uh, Jordan McGee was maybe my favorite draft pick from this class. So I'm really still, I'm really stoked generally on the group. 
And Pittman, like you said, had a really good OTA minicamp period. So uh, I'm very confident in the depth. I'm very confident in the top two guys. I'm just fascinated with how they're going to use them from a pass rush, you know, role allocation standpoint. But in terms of them playing football, like I'm very confident that they're going to do a good job as long as they stay healthy. Yeah, which, of course, knock on wood, fingers crossed, all the things. That's the case for uh, every single position on every team in the NFL. 